Hi there! Welcome to my channel! One of the key findings in the recent New Mexico Family Education Survey reported a significant decrease in student investment and engagement after the switch to distance learning. It is important to examine the connection between these items and to explore the supports needed for educators to continually engage their students and ensure that they are invested in a remote or hybrid learning experience. We adults know best. We've been there. We have been kids at a certain point in our life, and I'm sure a lot of you still enjoy playing games from time to time. Yes, you heard it right. Games. Using games in a lesson as part of teaching and learning not only helps to create positivity around the lesson, but most importantly, it motivates and engages students with their participation in the classroom and create a positive attitude toward learning. In addition, games tap into collaboration, communication, creativity, and critical thinking. All are essential for student success. So for this episode of the Biologist Video Tutorial, you will learn three different interactive games that you can create in Google Slides. But before we begin, if you are new in my channel, please click and like the subscribe button below. Also, if you like this video, share this to your teacher friends. And leave your comments below if you want a copy of the game templates I made. The first game I created for you is called Connect 4. Yes, you heard it right. I already created a template for you. This game is centuries old. Captain James Cook used to play it with his fellow officers on his long voyages, and so it has also been called Captain's Mistress. Milton Bradley published a version of this game called Connect 4 in 1974. Other names for this game are Four in a Row and Plot 4. And today, you will have it in your teaching toolbox as well. So how do we play it in your Google Slides? Basically, the students will have to choose a question hole, answer the question correctly, and then place his or her assigned color chip in the number hole. First to connect four wins the game. That simple. You can use it for reviewing the students for the upcoming tests, enhancing and developing skills, practice, and reinforcing a concept. This game can be played in pairs or in groups. For me, I prefer groups. Take note, collaboration and teamwork. If you decided to assign this in groups, I suggest limiting it to three consecutive chips instead of four if you will have three or four groups. Each group may alternate in answering their question whole, and if they don't get it right, the other group that answers the question correctly gets the question whole spot for their color chip. To our second game, Castle Conquests. Like our first game, this can also be played in pairs or in group of two or four. Each student or team of students can choose from easy, average, and difficult question. On this playing board, castles represent difficult questions, treasure chests are average, and all other spots are easy questions. Of course, they get the most points or score if they choose a difficult question. Students may only answer one or two questions at a time, and if they are the first one to answer the question for a certain question number they chose, they get to conquer and place their hexagonal chip on the playing board. So let the conquest begin. Now for our last game, Design Mr. or Miss Potato. This game is more fun if played individually so students can design their own Mr. or Miss Potato. To design their Mr. or Miss Potato, students choose a number and letter question combination from each row, and if they get it right, they get to drag the corresponding body parts for the answered question to Mr. Potato. Otherwise, choose another for a question. 
Complete all of Mr. Potato's body parts, and when finished, choose a male or a female hat and put Mr. or Miss Potato on TV before taking a screenshot. Free to modify this game and their rules and challenge your creativity in thinking of ways on how you can incorporate these games to your subject area and grade level. And please share your ideas in the comment section below. One last thing before we finish up, make sure to teach your students first the basic tools in Google Slides like undo button and basic skills like resizing and rotating images before doing any of these games. Practice makes perfect, so give it a try and modify as you see fit. Also, you may want to make several copies of your interactive game's Google Slides if you are teaching multiple classes. That's it for this tutorial. Don't forget to leave me your comments and like and subscribe to my channel so you are updated of new videos. That's it for now. I will see you next time.